saw for letting me know you can hear me. Okay. Oh, Matilda, I think you got your sound back. If you want to go ahead and mute yourself. Okay. Um, I just want to quickly go over the timeline just so we're all know um, what the dates are that we're working with for this semester. So let me go ahead and pull that up for you. Um, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay, um, so I this is just from the email. So right now you guys should all be working um, through phase one, which is all classes that need an academic classroom. And that data entry is due to us by Wednesday, February 10th. Um, so that's everything. Think about that, that that's everything that you need to schedule that you do not have available to you as a department. So any previous large lectures, large actives, need actives, need classrooms, anything that you need us to schedule for you is what is due on Wednesday, February 10th. If you have teaching labs or you need a computer lab or you have other departmental rooms, that is part of phase two. So um, I know philosophy, for example, they were emailing me this morning. They don't have any other teaching labs or departmental rooms. So everything for them is going to be due on Wednesday, February 10th. For some of your departments, um, especially ones that have a lot of labs, that's not going to be the case and you will do the phase one and the phase two. Um, and where you're splitting that up into what we need to solve for you and what you can solve um, yourself. Um, so phase two, which is the departmentally owned rooms and the computer lab request, those are all due by Wednesday, February 24th. And then of course the timetable, we are shooting to get published on Monday, March 22nd. Um, so you will get back what the, the what you give to us on February 10th will be solved and committed and shown to you in unit time and available on your section enrollment reports um, on February 17th. Actually, it'll be available in Cognos because Cognos is a day late and a dollar short. As we know, it'll be available on the 18th, but you can always look in unit time on the 17th and it will you will um, be able to see your time and room assignments for all those classes that you gave to us to solve by the 10th. Are there any lingering questions? On the timeline. Did you mean we could see them in unit time on March the 17th or February? You said February 17th. No, it's February. It's February 17th because that's one week. I'm I'm going to solve and commit everything um, one week after you guys turn them in. It's always right. around like a week or two turnaround. So yeah, it's February 17th. Anything from phase one, you'll be able to see your time and room assignments uh, a week later. Oh, so you're talking about from phase one. Okay, I'm sorry. I from thought you meant phase one. two also. No, phase two, um, it's a week after. Uh, phase two, you'll see your assignments right away because they're all your departmentally owned um, right. classrooms. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other additional timeline? Oh, Cassie, you're asking about CEC. Well, so CEC is get, it will be solved after the departmental. That always happens after departmental, Cassie. Any other additional questions on the timeline? Okay. Um, quickly moving on again, I want to reiterate that there will be no OL sections or OL cohorts for fall 20. One, so oops, let me go ahead and mute Cindy here. Um, so there will be no need to create any kind of OL sections for fall 21. Um, why is that? That's a good question, Matilda. The upper administration has determined that um, they no longer need a separate offering for those students and they're not going to have a cohort come fall. Uh, that's not to say that students are not going to not take a uh, not be able to return to campus or maybe choose not to come to campus, but there will be no specified co cohort come fall 21. Yes, you can still do async online. That's something we'll discuss. I know, I'm sorry, Phil. Um, I, I tried to have a push back, but this is the timeline we were given, so I, I know it's um, a tight turnaround. Um, so no OLs. Okay, so let's talk about some resources for your build. I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, hold on. 
on here. Okay. Hopefully you can see the registrar's website. Can someone just say that they can? Please. Yeah, I can see Great. it. Great, thanks. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you, as always, is um, schedule types. A lot of people um, don't realize that this is there. This is purely just for your benefit, especially for maybe some newer schedule deputies. The, again, I was over in forms and then schedule type classifications. This just gives you general definitions about the different schedule types. Um, and this was pre COVID, so we, it doesn't talk about sync and async here. OK, not here. I'll get to where it does show you that. Also, again, for newer schedule deputies embedded in here is semester credit hour guidelines. So at the very bottom, it talks about how a credit hour relates to um, a, a class hour. So again, that information is always on our website. Um, something that does um, talk about course modality is over here on the pre-registration website. And I'm going to actually talk to them about maybe trying to get this also a link on the on the classroom scheduling side as well. I will be sending out an email that includes all these links I'm going over, so um, no need to try to memorize this, but there's a nice little PDF document about instructional modality located here, and it talks about the difference between face-to-face, -face, hybrid, high flex, sync online and async online. I know there's been a lot of confusion over this, especially for spring, so this is kind of a nice little easy PDF document that takes you through what it actually looks like in the schedule of classes and what each of those definitions mean. Um, so that's a nice little resource for you. Um, and we've had a lot of confusion on high flex and I want to tell you that high flex means that it is not, it doesn't mean a hybrid. High flex is this term that was coined by an EAPS um, professor where essentially the instructor is coming face to face every day and the students are rotating on days around that. So it's not hybrid because the instructor is coming face to face every day. That's why it's coined high flex. Typically high flex is used when the enrollment is higher than the room and they're, the students are rotating in and out. So that's an example of a high flex. Um, let me go back here scheduling. I also want to show you that I added um, two new links within like the past year. This is a classroom technology one. This just talks about um, every room and what the technology is in the room. You can also find this information in Unitime, but this is um, just a one stop shop for all of the classrooms and um, all the AV that is uh, available in those classrooms. And then going back to scheduling i also added the classroom drawing so a lot of people will ask me about the sharepoint site that has all the covid um, capacity updated room drawings and they are all located um, on on jenna Rickus's sharepoint site that i linked straight from our website and you can find any classroom and even some teaching lab and departmental rooms that show you the um, covid um social distance layout of the room so if you're having instructors ask you about what the new layout is this is a good resource for you to point them to there um for as far as the build we are also going to be doing the sign up genius um, just to, because we're all remote or most of us are at least my team is remote that way we can do virtual calls with you um, so i'll send that link out as well after the meeting um, another thing I need to show you from the website is the projections. Keith had a meeting last week on Thursday um, all about projections, so be sure that you watch that if you weren't in the meeting. Um, I can again send that link out to his um, recording with the follow up from today. If you have any questions about projections, those will need to go to Josie Galloway. Um, not my team. So Josie handles the projection part of that. So they're right under reports under faculty and staff, and then it has projection reports. And right here is the fall 2021. So um, be sure to not only um, look at those, but then watch uh, Keith, the recording of Keith's meeting if you were not in attendance for that. Um, something else I just wanted to cover briefly before we get into questions is making sure that again, I know we look at them every um, term, but 
especially honing in on those student conflicts for courses. Um, so a lot of times, you know, my our staff or myself will have we uh, will point out, you know, hey, you know, this says, you know, four people want to take this at the same time. Um, we just need to make sure that we're following up on those and um, doing a detailed watch because as we know, pre reg is batching now and they're seeing a lot of that on their side. So we just need to make sure that we're following up with those student conflicts or doing the best so we are not um, prohibiting students from um, progressing in their degree from are the courses conflicting. So sometimes that requires the departments to work together when they know in past history that they've had that issue. So just wanted to bring that up pointed out that it is something we're going to try to really press on a lot um, for the fall build. All right. All right. I'm going to stop sharing here and go to. Oh, yeah. I, I miss them too, Michelle. Uh, will classrooms be? De yes, Cassie. Again, thanks, Cassie. Uh, we will be using as of now COVID capacities for fall. So it will be the de-densified capacities for the fall build. So that's why I said this build is very similar to what we just built for spring um, because we will still be using the de-densified capacities. Um, Cassie, the guidance is loosely 60% face-to-face, 40% online. Um, and the 40% online, they really want to try to do like 30% of that should be synchronous and just 10 would be asynchronous. But those are just general guidelines. We still do do need a good percentage of um, things that are distant. We we simply do, won't have enough room. It was a struggle for spring, and as you all know, the fall build is always much larger than the spring build. Um, so it's it's going to be a struggle. So we need to make sure we're trying to maintain um, not everything face to face. I'm also seeing, I'm bringing that up, just talking out loud. I'm seeing a lot right now where um, what we have in the schedule of class really isn't what is happening in the class. And um, so, for example, um, there's a lot more hybrid going on than what we're showing on the schedule of classes. Um, so just keep that in mind. And I realize that that could have been a last, a lot of these are probably last minute changes from the instructors themselves, just not feeling comfortable going every day to class. So I get that, but just making sure we're again, understanding if a course is going to be online, is it synchronous or is it asynchronous? Um, I don't feel, I, I'm not sure about that. I don't, I don't think that they would go back to normal. I Maybe there's a chance that we could get some more capacity in some of the larger rooms, um, like the largest rooms, or we could maybe um, be less de-densified, but I don't, I haven't seen any indication that it's just going to go back to normal. And for our purposes, meaning the, you know, 80 people here, that's going to be another, that's going to be a redo and a schedule build. So. So I hope that doesn't happen, but I haven't seen any, any indication. I would think if anything would be the case, it might be um, increase in capacity, but not to normal. But how should we have scheduled? So Rex, one professor told me he intended to do some face-to-face -face and some online. So here's the thing, when an instructor tells you that, that they wanna do a mix, in order for us to accurately put that on the schedule, we need to know the days that they're actually going to be face to face. So we can create, you know, um, date patterns or we have date patterns out there like, you know, maybe odd weeks they're going to be face to face and even weeks they're going to be online. I mean, there is a way we can do that. It's just that's more, an inf more information gathering that you would need from the instructor in order for us to schedule it. The willy nilly stuff is stuff we can't schedule. I mean, if they're just going to be like, if I don't feel like coming to class, I'm not going to come to class. Well, we can't accurately schedule that, you know, in a schedule, especially six months in advance of when it's actually happening. Modality needs to stay the same that we schedule it in or Dean needs to. OK, uh, not for the fall build, Matilda. That is only for the current term that's happening. You can um, right now when we're building, you can set up the course however you want to. As of right now, you don't need Dean's approval for the fall 21 build 
to change a course modality. You need the dean's approval to change course modality. Once the schedule has been published, then it becomes um, what Keith was talking about on Thursday, like a contract with the student. Um, so at, when you're doing the build, no approvals need to happen. You are free to just set up the course how it is intended to be to be taught. OK, what else do you want to talk about? Um, let me look through my. No, it's Betty or Robin, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? Are you going to go over the the uh, distant, the, the instructional types? What needs to go in there and what doesn't? Sure, I can do that. Um, it seems too early for instructors to commit now and not be able to change later. Uh, tell me more about that, Isabel. So right now is March. Or yeah. It's March. Sorry. It seems it's, like it's March. It's January. No, it's January. Yeah. <laughs> right now is January. We're building the schedule and I understand that will be published in March and that's a contract with the student. But with all the things that are happening, asking a professor to decide which days are you going to teach in August? Yeah. yeah like, I know. Are you sure that you want to do this in person? It seems too early. Yeah. And, you know, like putting on top of everything, the idea of having these extra additional permissions for the instructors to change is is a lot. It seems like and I can pass that along to um, those that make the decisions. Um, I mean, I couldn't agree more. Um, I especially believe in for fall because we always build so far out and with COVID it has, um, you know, just created an extra layer for all of us and asking instructors to predict the future on what is going to happen in August is seems very premature. Um, but it's something we're just going to have to work through. I, I totally, I hear you out, Isabel. If an instructor wants to do both face to face and a distance separately, do we request two separate CRN sections for that? Yes, that would be two separate CRNs. It probably even I would do two separate configurations. Who was that? Let me see here. Uh, Vicky, yeah. So, like for MSC 230, Vicky, that's a good example where you have like a distance CRN. And then you have a regular face to face lecture. So two different CRNs, two different basically sections that a student can either pick. Do I want to take this course distance or do I want to take this course face to face? My advisors asked me to ask when the CRF opens. Um, I don't know about that timeline. I'm sorry, Susan. Um, that's something that Keith's going to have to release. I don't even think I have that. Um, and I think it's in draft form, so I don't know that. I'm sorry. Um, oh, yeah, I was, OK, let me see here. We want to talk about how it gets it. Is the fall going to be batch registration? Did Keith talk about that in the Thursday meeting? I thought he did, and I believe he said yes. What he said was that we would get notification hopefully by Friday, but he uh, didn't oh. say 100 percent batch. So I'd like mm -hmm. to know the status of that soon. Okay, I'm gonna thanks, Nana. I'm going. I'll put that down as a uh, to follow up with Keith and let you guys know. And of course, as soon as um, if the communication comes out, I'll forward anything I get to you all um, to let you know. But I haven't personally seen any communication. If he said something was coming out on Friday, I sir, I have not received anything on my end. So I will follow up with Keith about that. Okay. OK, I think what Robin was refer Robin was referring to is let me share my screen. Let me go over to now if Lisa Crane is on the call, don't worry. I always pick on AE because they're first. I'm in the as you can see, I am in the test environment, so no worries here. So I think what they're talking about is async and, and sync um, and how that gets scheduled. So for a lecture that needs to be synchronous, if it's synchronous, it needs a time 
that a time and day. So we actually have to schedule that and the room would be sync online. So that means that all the students in that section are logging in on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 1030. They're logging into their computer and they're all meeting together. Um, asynchronous means you could log in at any time you want. No one's meeting together. The material is out there for you to look at at your leisure. That's async online and it does not have a time, a day. Um, or a room, it doesn't need a room at all. It just needs a prefer. We just need to prefer async online and then it shows up on the schedule, which I think is minor. It could be um, that could be confusion for for you guys. But when is something is async, meaning purely distance, um, you don't need room. You don't need a room for that, but we actually need to strongly prefer async online and then it shows up for the student on the student schedule. So for here, yeah. Oh. yeah. I was going to say, but this is a distance instructional type. What is? A sync online. Async online is distance instructional type. Oh, yeah. Yes. Is that what you wanted me to clarify? My apologies. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, async online. If it is async online, then it should be set up as a distance instructional type, meaning not a lecture as async online. It should be distance. So if you're having an instructor that's saying, I'm just going to put the material out there and they can look at it at their leisure, or if they tell you async online, you should be setting that up as a distance section. If it needs to be meeting at a certain time, meaning synchronously, then you can go ahead and you don't use a distance, use the lecture because they're getting, they're essentially are viewing a lecture all at the same time or a lab or a recitation, whatever it, whatever it may be, go ahead and use the correct instructional type. Betty and Robin, did I miss something there? Yes, <clears throat> go share your screen again. And show what? Go to AAE. Oh, I cannot hate this little bar up here. Sorry. OK, yeah. And so in when you're going in and adding a distance and then you're using the instructional type, what method? Right there, explain all of those. The only time you will use any of this is if you have a distance offering. You don't use it at any other time. Right, so, so, so yeah, that. the instructional method should be on default unless if you are using a distance instructional type, it's going to be online. We're not going to use non-residential online anymore. That needs to go away for fall. That was for all those OL offerings, so we should never be picking that. Hybrid would be picked if you have um, purely what a hybrid is. If you have one component, meaning a lecture is meeting face-to-face, -face, and then you have a distance component, that's a hybrid. And primarily, primarily online is hardly ever used. It's mainly um, only ever used if, if it's the course is pretty much all online, but they require a couple come to campus face to face meetings a couple times throughout the semester. Then we'll use primarily online. But all we should be defaulted to traditional, which is face to face. Um, so no need to mess with that. But if you want a distance offering, so asynchronous, you know, you're always going to come down here for an asynchronous offering and you're always going to pick distance learning for that. OK, what else? What other questions do we have? What do we put? Does async needs to show as dis so async needs to show as distance? Yes, yes. What it, I thought Keith implied that we would batch, but never said we are going to batch. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought the same thing, uh, but I have it down for a to do uh, to take back to him. So I'll follow up with you all on that. What do we put if they are teaching high flex? Is there something out there? OK, high flex again is a lecture. So high flex is only ever used in in face to face offerings. So that's going to be your lectures, recitations, labs, and that's only when the enrollment exceeds the room where they're rotating the students. The instructor showing up at for all the um, days and times and the uh, students are rotating around that. That's high flex. So nothing that that's nothing to do with synchronous or asynchronous. 
And we should that is correct, Phil. Thank you. If you're over enrolling the room, meaning you're going to do a high flex situation, you need to lower your room ratio to probably half size of the room. So 0.5, which I know we talked about that in spring two, um, which is 0.5. Yes, thanks, Cassie. Cassie points that out. It's 0.5 ratio, which so it's basically meaning you're going to go over. You're going to go over the room. What else? Is the 60 40 split recommended or expected? Well, Bobby, I mean, I would say you, I mean, that's why we have that course modality dashboard, which I, I can show you guys that too if you want me to, um, where it actually is showing the split because um, we want to make sure that not 100% is scheduled face to face. We need that split there. So I don't know if it's, you know, uh i would say highly recommended <laughs> so yeah that, i guess that's what i was thinking like um because i'm assuming that a lot of our professors are going to want to stay online sure that's 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 great and, i love that and that is that's the question is that recommended or do we need to say no we really need to have at least 60 percent or i would i am more concerned that people are not gonna that people are going to go over the 60 percent of face to face i'm personally i'm not concerned about the distance right now i don't think i think you can tell them that that's fine okay We're, so you need you need the 60 percent because of space limitations you got it you got it so okay. and i i don't think csr was one that was close i know that um there ha there were some people that had too heavy in distance and they were notified. So I think if your department wasn't notified that you were aware of that you, they were a little too heavy on distance, I think how you rolled for spring is going to be just fine. Um, yeah. How do you input high flex in the system? Yes. Yes, Cindy. It's just the ratio. The, there's no other, there's no um, instructional method for a high flex. It's simply um, a term I just you know it's it's a term that actually just came about because of COVID so um, there's no other way to do it except for with the room ratio um, that will allow the enrollment to exceed the the room so yeah okay let's see so high flex should appear the same as an in-person class yes yes Rex it would it would look it's just a lecture or whatever and it's just, the only difference is going to be that the room ratio is lower to allow that enrollment to exceed that's so why I want to know how we tell us. Yes, yes. OK, so no news is good news. Modality dash are still going to be available for fall as far as I know. Does anyone need me to show you where the mod modality dashboard is? Um, I'm happy to do that if so, but I don't know anything about it. OK, that's again. That's a Josie Galloway question again. Um, were we able to preference whether we wanted all students in the same room? OK, with high flex, will will we be asked again? Um, so yes, you can if you want everyone in the same room, then you're just you're not doing the room ratio that tells us that you want everyone scheduled in the same room. However, please know as of right now we have a 250 cap. So if your enrollment is over 250, it's an automatic that you're going to have to um, split the students up. I don't know Rita what the OK with flex is. Will we be asked again? I'm not sure what that means. I'm sorry. We were asked, are you OK with with having the room split up or would you prefer to have all of your students in one room? We were asked that question. Yeah. Uh, what are you OK with? And we were able to preference and I was asking if we were going to be able to preference again this time. And yeah, you can. I think that's a question for your instructor. I mean, do or and I think it also depends on on what your limit is. I mean, um, well, our limits, I, I think most limits are small, but so that wouldn't be the situation. But it just came from all of you. You ask all of us what we would prefer last time, and we answered you. I don't. Do you remember that? I don't. Yeah. Someone help me. I don't remember that. Well, we got we got a questionnaire saying how would you like your classes? Um, what would you prefer with your classes? And we answered that and, and sent back that response. And then that way. That helped you build the schedule. Hmm. I'm not sure if so, I'm, I don't know if I just have memory loss, but I don't remember that. So if someone else remembers that, please. Yeah, explain more <laughs> if someone else remembers that I don't remember. 
Um, I mean, I remember for the classes, us needing to know that, but again, that would be by the room ratio. I think that was way, oh, yes, uh, Rita, that wasn't me. That was that team that had included, um, oh, who was that team? It was like Josie and them, and um, yeah, that was a team that worked on that, and that was because we were taking an already built schedule and revamping it, and they were doing that in um it was like a qualtrics survey or something and that wasn't from academic classroom scheduling and i hope that we never do that again okay yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> well that that's that's what i was remembering that we yeah. received something like that from yeah. somewhere okay yeah that was way last summer thank you michelle yes that was from last summer and i never want to do that again okay <laughs> okay yeah so no i it, we won't be doing that 250 is absolute cap for any lecture room as of now where 250 was exceeded in Loeb. I don't think so. 250 shouldn't be exceeded in low bricks. As of right now, 250 is the absolute cap for any lecture room. So either your instructors need to have multiple sections of 250 or they're going to have to rotate the students. I presume we would like to evening times. Yes, of course. Thank you, Phil. We would, of course, love any evening um time so if that's something especially those larger courses where it's going to be really tight in those rooms um that's going to be great if if an instructor is willing to do the evening that's wonderful i'm okay with if you're afraid if i open it to all my sections then yeah so phil what you could do um is just do it on a couple or um leave me a note on there and just say like max two or something and i'll just pick two random sections to add an evening to instead of doing it at the top level yeah thanks phil um but yeah even that's a great point thanks phil that again press the evening on your instructors if you if you are able to is everyone assuming certain courses must have an online option yeah you know, Vicki Klein and I were emailing about this uh, back and forth um, today and Friday, I think, Vicki, and yes, um, since there's no OL cohort, then uh, you have to think about that. Um, so distance offerings, asynchronous distance offerings, um, I don't know how that's all going to go down. There's, I feel like there's a, um, some unanswered questions there that hopefully we'll be able to find out soon. What else? What other pressing issues do you need to know about? As always, you can come to us now, come to Betty and Robin and I now, if you are feeling stressed or you're confused on something or you're a newer, newer scheduled deputy and you just don't know where to start, reach out now. Cause as close, the closer we get to that, February 10th deadline, the less time we have. So reach out early to them and we can create, we can get some um, calls going on with you and try to help you as much as you can. Uh, I wish, Susan, I am just one person. I cannot do that. <laughs> what if we are always stressed? Yeah, I, I don't know, Cassie, yeah, yeah, me too. Um, so there's no separate charging schedule for the current OL students. So there's no separate charge. No, I believe not, Vicki. Right. The fee schedule, I do not believe. They're not having an OL cohort, so there is no different fee schedule. Yeah, I will, Mardell, for sure. I've already kind of got an email going on what I talked about with the links there. Um, so I can definitely, I will definitely send that out. And as always, if I've missed a link or I missed something, just let me know and I will um, send it out, send it out again. Happy to do that, whatever helps. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Mardell, if you, um, if you're needing some extra help or something, reach out to, I think Robin is your scheduling assistant um and reach out now and she can start helping you mainly it's just once you start doing a couple of them um you know you'll get the hang of it and you'll be able to speed right along 40 60 splits because there isn't enough class space or more to cope but i think you may have already answered that i missed yeah yeah you're right vicky yes that is correct uh, oh you want to see where the course modality dashboard is yeah let me let me share that again one minute okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay 
Now this is a test for me because I got to think about where this is. I think it's in the projection reports. Mm -hmm. It is right here. So you go to the same place where you would go for projections under reports. And then um, here it is for spring. Not out there for fall yet because we haven't started um, scheduling classes. Um, but I believe, and I can confirm that with, with Josie. Let me see here. Um, but there should be a link up there for fall once we start scheduling the courses. So here it is. So it's located right there. And I don't know a lot about this. I'm definitely, I am not the person in charge of this, but you can see right here, this over here on the left, this is the whole university. And for spring, we have 61.6% face-to-face hybrid or high flex. So, and then in fall 20, we had basically 56. So we did go up a little bit there. And then here's the percentage for sync online. We got to get the sync online up. That's what I was stressing about. I wanted the sync online to be a little higher and we needed async to be lower. So do you see how async online is supposed to be much lower than synchronous online is supposed to be higher? So this is the threshold of what the university would like to see, the dotted line right there. Okay, let me come back and go here. And what else did we see? Beth, so those students who were part of the OL, will be included in the residential, yes, or do we not know? I believe so, that's how I am interpreting it. I am interpreting that anyone that cannot or does not want to come back to campus is just, they need to find distance offerings to take. That's how I'm interpreting it right now until I have further information or until further information is giving to us, given to us, excuse me. The past that we've shared classrooms with the retirement, are we still not doing that? That is correct, Vicki. We are not sharing classrooms. That's why we're doing this weird phase phase approach. So everything goes in one bucket, um, like what I mentioned earlier. So we're not going to be sharing classrooms, unfortunately, for fall. I'm hopeful we'll get back to doing that in spring because it's an easier build, I know, for everybody when you just have some classrooms at your disposal. Um, but for right now, due to COVID, it's all in one bucket. Because if you think about it, how would I even know what classrooms to give? And probably the classrooms I gave you wouldn't even fit half of your courses because everything's at reduced limits. So um, I get why, why it doesn't make sense, but it's definitely frustrating when you're the one building the schedule. I get that. What else? Anything else? What size rooms for the hardest? Definitely, yes, I would fill definitely the um, large rooms, although right now they're the ones that I feel like are doing a lot of the hybrid stuff, um, uh, which is always a frustrating point for me because I spend a lot of time trying to get large classes as, classes in rooms, and then they e end up either switching to online or doing a hybrid approach, which you know, I spend a lot of time trying to make it all fit and then they kind of change, which I get. It's just life, but definitely the large, large rooms for sure. I honestly feel anything over 100 size is difficult to schedule with COVID. Always, every single time I would run the schedule, um, I would try to do test schedules every night just to see what classes were falling out and not getting assigned for the spring build. And every night I was looking at usually around 10 to 15 sections that weren't getting assigned and they were always over 100 size. Um, we are looking at the possibility, just an FYI, kind of um, a teaser. I, I asked if they could, we have some random rooms in Stewart, which you may or may not be aware of, but um, there's a lot of smaller rooms. And so I asked if they could combine some of those rooms into a larger room to give me another hundred size room. Um, so I'm looking to see if they're able to do that. So if they could, that that might give us two, two additional hundred size rooms, which would lessen the load in the hundred range, but it doesn't do anything about our higher numbers. And as you know, it all depends too on this freshman class coming in. Um, which is expected expected to be just as large as the past two years. So I think someone someone told me the other day it's like um, right now we have a million parking spots, but we have two million cars to park. You got to double park them, I guess. 
What else do you want to know? And I will be reaching out to you guys because I'm at plan on doing the test runs. Um, once you guys start submitting your schedules, I'll start doing test runs just to see how things are shaking out. And so as always, I mean, most of the departments that have issues always know that I reach out and say, I'm having trouble scheduling this class. What can we do? Can we go in the evening? Can they switch different days? Can they be flexible on time? Um, Another thing that I want you guys to think about is I always have trouble um, scheduling around certain instructors or courses that have a very limited time um, restraint. So like maybe the instructor can only teach on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 to 2. Well, that's very limited, especially when the class is a 200 size class. That gives me no flexibility to, to for anything really. Those are the classes that would really benefit from at least having an online section um, to relieve um, some of that that numbers, the enrollment to go down, and then I could get, I could have a better chance of giving them what they want. So keep that in mind. The higher you are in your number, and the less restriction you are, it's the harder for me to schedule. What else? I think notes are really important too. Um, we go through and try to read the notes as best as we can. But remember, I mean, this is also tough on us. I mean, we're getting everybody's room assignments all at one time and we have a week to turn them around. So um, we, it's a tough timeline to, to try to follow. Did you already answer this? We should give the faculty not available times versus the time they want. Yeah, it's better that way, Melissa. It's better to put the times they absolutely cannot do than all the times they're okay with. Um, so it's better just to ask them what are what are you what can you not do? Don't give me what you can. Just give me what you can't do. And again. You know, having people be open to not only Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, but Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, basically any time between 10 and 3 is it's the, it's so tight. Everyone wants to go 10 to 3 on a Tuesday, Thursday. So just opening that up a little bit uh, uh, would be beneficial or maybe even those larger classes doing a hybrid option as well. Um, so maybe doing like um, a Wednesday, Friday face to face and a Monday online, which a, a lot of people ended up doing. Or something of that nature, trying to be a little creative um, can help go a long way too. And happy to help figure those those out, those issues out. Oh, no problem, Sheila. Shelly, sorry. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. I'm just looking at our little uh, Q&A thing that we had going. Can you just um, clarify again about appointments? Oh, sure. Yes. Sorry, Robin. So I'm going to be sending out the sign up genius um, where you can make appointments and uh, Betty, Robin, Betty, Robin and I um, will schedule time. But but please know that if you are just needing um, to be solved, you don't need to make an appointment for that. Just send an email to your scheduling assistant, Betty or Robin, and they can run your solver for you. So if you're ready to go and you don't have any issues, you don't need to make an appointment just to solve. You can just send them an email. Appointments should be specifically for um, helping or questions or doing something um, that you're having trouble with. Um, so if you just need need to solve, just shoot them an email and they'll solve they'll solve for you. Is that what you need? Anything else on that, Robin? And if they just want us to run it to see where they're at, Sure. You know, if we have any issues there, we can do that too. We don't yep. need Absolutely. I have several departments actually that will reach out to me and say, can you just see where, where I'm at or where my issues are, if I'm having any conflicts? And then I'll run that for them and show and give them like, hey, this is you're having some issues with these courses. I know nursing and I do that a lot. We'll go kind of go back and forth on that. Ooh, another thing to think about is date patterns. So I kind of mentioned this earlier, but if Kimmy is on the phone or on the phone, oh my gosh on the call who else has nursing has date patterns a lot of date, pharmacy has a lot of specific date patterns you need to be looking at those now and having them uh, having us update the um dates for you yeah yeah thank you <laughs> mm -hmm. anything else pressing questions or problems and I can do another one of these if we feel like we're struggling with specific top uh, specific topics. 
If I can tell that I'm getting the same emails over and over again, I'm happy to do just another short 30 minute um, help session um, to clear some things up. Whatever I can do to help you help you all, I'm happy to do. You just have to tell me. Nothing else? No problem, Rex. OK, and if we don't have any other pressing issues, then I'm going to let you go about your day. I'm going to work right now on sending the follow up email with all the links that we talked about um, and um, anything else I can think of, whatever I whatever resources I can give to you, I'm going to give to you. Um, and we have until February 10th. You guys can do this. I know you can. Uh, we'll work together. We can do it together. OK, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. And talk to you later. Bye.